that we were tossed out of the university was that we were sharing a lab with a company that was developing a wind turbine, and they were getting funding from the government, but the transformer essentially makes new wind turbines obsolete. So there's there's no there's no rationale for there's no legitimate rationale for taking money from the government to the, to develop a new transformer when when you have another company right in the same lab that has a generator that can turn itself and a transformer that can that can bump the power up from one watt to virtually any any number uh, just like that. That's and the government has invested interest in fuel. Yeah, there's fuel, uh, yeah. Wind, there's solar, and and solar. Yeah. yeah. So what 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 we the approach that we've done is we you know we went to Ottawa U, we went to MIT, we spent close to a hundred thousand dollars on third party evaluations uh, between uh, 2007 when right. the first discovery was made and 2010 when we got kicked out of Ottawa U. And uh, from there we we said goodbye to the academic world and hello to the commercial world. And the commercial world now sees that there is validity and the, the companies that we're dealing with now have all personally validated the innovation and they've either recreated it or had somebody else do it. So they know that it works and, and they're they're taking it forward. So the burden for us is is released somewhat. Yeah. So I have two questions. What area are these people taking it in? Like I just heard it's not for the vehicles because yeah. of our industry. And secondly in US do you have something comparable, exactly what you've discovered going on in the U.S., or no, we, you're unique? The, the innovation is going into electric bikes, electric scooters, electric motorcycles. The electric bike company makes electric bikes for Daimler, okay? So as soon as, soon as they have their electric bike running, they're going to take it in and demonstrate it to Daimler. So from there, we'll get into potentially into the EV market, and uh, so the generator the generator applies to electric vehicles, wind turbines, hydroelectric generators, and so on. The transformer is being commercialized by uh, a company in the states, and we have a manufacturer in Toronto. They manufacture uh, amplifiers. So and. They, they want to use the, the transformer innovation to basically uh, basically uh, you know charge laptops for free or run your washer or dryer with a serious seriously reduced amount of power or even produce transformers that go between the grid and your house and drop your power consumption by 90 percent or whatever. That, that, so, that means we can get rid of our smart meters and uh, reliance on well, oh. no, they're gonna they're gonna the raise trouble, the prices up. Yeah, the trouble the the trouble with the with the with the with the transformer for commercial use, home use is that once it hits the market, they'll they'll charge you. They'll start charging for what's called reactive power, which you don't pay for now. But they'll start you know they'll they'll find a way around it, but. Uh, nevertheless, it's it's still an innovation that has applications as well. And the, the transformer, for example, can be um, can be integrated onto a solar panel array and triple or quadruple the output from a solar panel array. So it makes it would make solar panels that much more. What vested interests do you think are really other than the fact that the presentation sounds a little bit incredulous too? Some businesses, what what vested interests are you bumping up against? It's yeah. to be easier to that's the ones that you're not bumping up against. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, we we are we again, you know, we took the innovation to MIT. They validated the performance, we brought it into Ottawa U. Spent two and a half years in the power lab at Ottawa U. Uh, 
you know, so uh, the, 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 the problem that we came up to basically to this, to that point was that it was, it was for most people too good to be true, but also uh, nobody was able to say that it wasn't true. So it was too good to be true for a lot of people, but nobody could prove that it didn't work. Now the NRC scientist that came to the lab that tested the generator, he came to prove that it was, that again, that I was, I was lying. The, the guys from DRDC who came to test the transformer came for the same reason, and we had an open door policy at Ottawa U for two and a half years where we gave hundreds if not well, hundreds and hundreds of demos, and nobody was able to come in and say that it, it was phony or baloney. And again, Ottawa U, the, the Dean of Engineering, the Director of Engineering, and Dr. Abash all had a demo before we were allowed in. So do you think that people would rather turn their backs and try to reconcile the theory? Sorry? Do you think that there's a resistance for people to, to change their... their, their well, no, it's uh, to turn the backs rather than trying to reconcile. It's business. it's just an innovation. When when the Wright brothers created the That's airplane, right. yeah. it took four years for the scientific community to accept that they were actually flying <laughs> while they were flying. So <laughs> this is the normal. This is just human nature. Doctor Abash at Ottawa U basically said, "This is not an engineering question. It's not a physics question. It's a human nature question." And so, and, and Dr. Bash went on record and said, this literally is four new chapters in physics books. But the guys who write the physics book, they don't want to have to write four new chapters. So they don't even want to pay attention. So this is, so there's a, there's a, there's, Newton's third law says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. In electricity terms, in generator terms, it's called that law is, is called Menzies' law. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when an innovation comes along that has a, an action or a reaction, there's a human reaction that's equal and opposite to that, and you have to get to the result. That's where we're getting at. So. What's the smallest scale you can make? He's the tiniest. How tiny can you make? There's, there's yeah, there should be no, no limit to the size. Like, I mean, Whatever is currently available, that should be doable, and whatever is the largest size should also be good. There's can you network them? Can you cascade them, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Any other questions? How to? Sounds like if the power of the electricity of the pieces, the solar pieces, you have a problem with somebody who has an electric computer. Well, it's, it's you do, you do. Yeah, that's, that's just nice. Just to give another example, I'm working with macular degeneration and treatment resistant corneal ulceration, showing the results, but the head of the eye institute says, well, no, i got too many studies going on. I'm not interested in doing another study. I emailed back and said, well, what about the people who aren't responding to any of your study medications? to not even access to something that totally safe seems needlessly cruel, at that point you stop talking to me. So I mean you're running through this all the time because people yeah, yeah, we, get their headspace we ran, they live in their headspace. Yeah, we, we ran into that right up until the middle of well, the middle of two thousand and ten when when the university took away our access keys to our lab and then destroyed all three prototypes so we had in the lab. So when that happened, we, we moved out. And, uh, well, yeah, well, you know, it could have been anything. Right? Once you don't have access to your lab, anything can happen. So once that occurred, we, we moved out and then we, you know, the writing was on the wall. And we just, we just started to focus on commercial companies that, 
we recognize the potential, and that's where we're at. And I think going in with bicycles, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Okay, just you know, leaking in behind and all of a sudden. Yeah, a large, large, auto, large automotive manufacturer will never talk, well, they have. I mean, we've talked to Jaguar, BMW, Nissan, General Motors, Chrysler. But they're all by the same principal investors, they're all the oil and gas companies, yeah. uh, so they can't. How about Peugeot? PSA and their new uh, new map. Yeah, if you if you if you type in my name and Google my name and go on to LinkedIn, you'll see that I have 3,300 connections. Most of them are automotive. They all know about the innovation. They're all waiting for somebody else to. You know, so I am just about done. Is there any last minute questions? I have a, a comment. There were uh, there were some um, uh, automotive places in Canada that were getting shut down, and uh, people were, there was a, a documentary about workers taking them over and running it themselves. Because basically, it was a, like factory we were working factory, all the workers, and um, and basically uh, just sitting there because the company, the, the bosses decided that they didn't want to run it and want to move somewhere else that was cheaper. Um, so the, basically, like the, the idea is, you can repurpose. If if there were an automotive business that was out of out of business, basically repurpose it and, and keep the same factory and yeah 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 uh, yeah. yeah. Um, there's an electric car company in the states that basically did that on the new software. So. Right? No, it was uh, Karma, Karma, Mister. Oh, right, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go. So this is a game changer in the, for the oil industry. The oh yeah, okay. let, me, let me just touch on that for a second. Okay, so Electric Mobility Canada, which is which is a federal federal government, uh, uh, federally sponsored initiative to get EVs on the road. Their chairman came to the lab at Ottawa U, saw the innovation and said, this is a, he basically said, this is an epic game changer, okay? So when he went back, um, he went back to his office and instructed the director of the, uh, Electric Mobility Canada to get us to present the innovation to all the members, all their members, they had 300 members in the, in the EV community in Canada, all the major corporations. And uh, uh, one of the, uh, the vice president of Magnet International uh, was on the board of Electric Mobility Canada, and he pulled the plug on the entire, the entire initiative. So, uh, so we lost that opportunity, but uh, we're, uh, we're still at it, and uh, and now we're we're essentially, hopefully, going to find our way back to that international through Bionics, which is uh, which will be good. Which will be good. Good. Thank you. 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 Thank you.